I said to them in the last service that God doesn't need to prove himself. He has already proven himself. And God walks. Does he walk? Every day you hear one new testimony that tells you this thing works. And I say to you, if what works is not working for you, it's either you are not working it well, or you are not working it at all, or you are not working it enough, or something is working against it. Are you with me? And if you don't know how things work, you can be in church and die in church and not have evidence. And the reason I'm teaching you is to make sure that God is not found a liar in your case. I can't hear your amen. amen. You see, brothers and sisters, people get discouraged when they do their best and they don't see a result. Is that true? But what you don't know is bigger than you. And one small adjustment can change your story. We have been teaching this from the first Sunday of this month. If you were not here, or you just attended one service, and you didn't listen to the CDs, I'm begging you to go and pick all the CDs and listen to them. You may find out that you have been wasting your time in church for many years. Many Christians don't come to church to learn something to apply. And if you keep making the same old mistake, you keep having the same old results. Are you with me? But if you believe in something, and you are going to do it, do it well. Praise the Lord. I've been operating in faith and faith is not working for me. No, faith works. So the first Sunday we taught you on the laws of dynamic faith. If you find that your faith is not working, pick the CD, first service to the last service, listen to it again and again and again until you have an IC moment. Have you ever been talking to somebody before? He said, I see. He wasn't blind before. But suddenly, the eye of the inner man opened. Are you here? Uh -uh. Are you here? Yes, and if you are going to do life well, and going to pass the tests of life, you better study your course well. Uh, many of us went to school and then you want to write your wayek or any other exam after they've taught you in class you find out that you will sit down in your own house or in the lecture room or, or anywhere and then let's say you are doing mathematics you pick up the old questions and you are trying to solve them by what they taught you is that so? Ah. Huh? And then you are asking questions to know that you understand them. So that when you enter into the exam hall, you didn't enter assuming you understood it. You have practiced it before the exam came. Come on, talk to me. Uh, have you ever seen a formula before you thought you understood? And then when you started trying to use it to solve a, quest, a problem, you found that you couldn't handle it. Then you ask somebody and they explained it better. Come and talk to me. That's how this thing works. So when you see Christians suffering for a long time, believe me, most times it's not demons. And it's not because God wants them to suffer. It's simply because one small adjustment they needed to make, they didn't make them. So that's why we we'll talk to you on the laws of dynamic faith. The second week we'll talk to you on the laws of effectual prayer. Prayer works. If it's not working for you, something is wrong. Third week we'll talk to you on the laws of profitable sins. 
brothers and sisters many christians give and they don't find result so after some time they saw this giving a scam well it's not a scam it works it works for me and it will work for you Amen. but you need to know how to do it so he said but i've been giving i've been giving what do they need to teach me pick the cds from the first one listen again and again and again until the reality comes to you please take out time because life is higher than arithmetic take out time get back into the world extended infancy is not good in christianity assumption leads to frustration don't waste another year hoping for an answer when you could have gotten the answer in one month are you with me are you with me i will never forget a man many years ago went to a doctor and the doctor said there's something I need to do. Uh, we need to do a small surgery on your male organ. There's something wrong. And the man said, no, he doesn't want the surgery. And left. He doesn't worship here, but he's one of my disciples. Every program he attends. He has been believing God with his wife for 10 years. To the baby didn't come. One day he came to me and told me, about, I said, and... I said, you go and do the surgery quickly. He said, no, he doesn't want this. I said, go do the surgery. We have prayed all these years. It hasn't happened. Doesn't that tell you that God wants you to do the surgery? You go do the surgery. The surgery lasted less than 45 minutes. Less than three months later, his wife took it. They wasted 10 years on stupidity. No, you didn't hear me. Ten years on stupidity. You see, this life, the people that suffer the most are those who are assumptions. Get to know this thing you say you know. Uh, today, I'm not going to be shouting and screaming. It's not fire, fire. Are you with me? We'll continue from next Sunday. And through other programs, but... I want you to please understand. If 90% of the answers you get in Christianity comes from the pulpit, you are wasting destiny. You need to know how to get this thing to work. Lift your right hand and shout, this thing works. This thing works. Last week we looked at the laws of hasten results. How to hasten your result? We just finish a fasting now. Finish a program. How do I make sure that I don't wait for six months to get pregnant? I don't wait for another five months to get engaged. How do I hasten result? You sit down. You listen to what is taught. Because many times, when you listen to a message once, you think you understand it. Until you listen a second time. Listen a third time. Listen a fourth time. Listen a fifth time. You know, I was teaching my pastors from the satellite churches on Wednesday. And I said to them, you know, I've read a verse of the Bible since I was a kid. And I never understood the meaning until about a week ago. They were expecting me to give them one big verse of the Bible. And I said, it's the place where Jesus was talking to Peter. And said, don't be afraid, I am the one walking on the water. And Peter said, if it be you, ask me to come to you walking on the water. And God said to me, from that passage, Peter was trying to identify whether this is Jesus. When God speaks to you, how do you prove that it is the voice of God? He said, look at what Peter didn't say. Peter didn't say, if it is you, ask fish to fill this boat. 
He said, if it is you, ask me to do what is impossible by a man. He said, how to know that God wants you to buy that property, build that house, run that company, is because by your own physical ability you can't. The proof that is a voice of God is that it makes you walk on water. I say, I never discerned that from that passage until about three weeks ago. If it is you, ask me to do what a man can do. Because God never tells you to do what a man can do. He always tells you to do what we need him to do. Am I wasting my time with you? You can live your whole life on the Bible. But until your eyes are open, you don't see. Why would go through it again and again and again until it enters you? Am I wasting your time? Oh dear. Am I wasting your time? Today we're looking at the laws of abiding victory. Somebody say abiding victory. Shout it louder. Abiding victory. Since your mouth is smelling, don't talk. Let your neighbor talk. Those whose mouth are not smelling. Can I shout abiding victory? Lift your hand and say, I have the victory. I have the victory. It, will it will abide. It will abide. Can I hear your amen? amen? I'm sure you know you are more than a conqueror. Huh? A conqueror is the one that fought and won. More than the conqueror is the person who didn't have to fight. The box that, that entered the ring and fought and fought 11 rounds. Pian, 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 they hit him until his face changed. The mouth is bleeding. One side of the nose is uh, broken. He finished. They paid him $12 million. He's the heavyweight champion of the world. And he walks back home and hands it over to his wife. He's, more, he's a conqueror. The wife is more than conqueror. <laughs> no, I don't. Did, did you get what I'm talking to? <laughs> Jesus went to the cross, fought all the battle, came down and said, It is finished. I handed you the victory. That's why you're, I can't hear you. Lift your hand and say, I am more than a conqueror. You don't need to be fighting stupid battles. If you hear my voice, say yes. yes. You know, many people come to you, they think that deliverance is fighting devils. They, they settle down, they want to fight. No, deliverance is enforcing your victory. The victory was gotten at Calvary. People who don't know that, when they join churches that do spiritual warfare like Gateway, they have the mentality that demons are powerful. Witches and wizards are killing people. So they don't want to die, so they're fighting. No, you're not hearing. If you have my voice, say yes. Uh, if you have my voice, say yes. The woman that just testified now told you for three years from six months of bed the child was convulsing. They decided let's take the child and see pastor. They came with the husband when he was three. She came with the husband and we laid hands and she walked away. And the child is now how many years? Five years. And for five years not only that he has not convulsed, they have not had him to sleep in hospital one day. Not cold in five, in three years, in two years. That tells you this thing works. Am I wasting my time? God, God has given us a victory. Deliverance is not, is not that difficult. Stop making this thing look so difficult. Prosperity is not that difficult. Healing is not that difficult. Breakthrough. Sir, please look up. Believe me. It's not as hard as you think. Many people, when they walk into my office, and I said, I was, I was telling my workers, my pastors, when I was talking to them about this thing, I'm telling you now. I said, if Papa Yede will ever lay his hand on you, you will feel like if, uh, is this man serious at all? You are blessed. And while you are waiting for prayer, he has continued. 
for that you are blessed you can reap it for 10 years no is anybody hearing me here <laughs> sir it's not as difficult as you think it's your mentality satan has been defeated and you can walk in abiding victory lift your hand and say my victory will abide can i hear your amen? amen now after every major spiritual oppression like the one we just heard two kinds of victories that you must make sure by two kind of uh, uh faith victories that uh you must maintain the first one is a victory of persistence somebody say persistence somebody say persistence in hebrews chapter 10 35 to 38 he said don't cast away your confidence which has great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience. Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 36. For you have need of patience. That after you have done the will of God. You might receive what? The promise. Everybody look up here. We just prayed for you. Hello? Hello? Even if right now you have not seen the manifestation, do you know your answer has come? Yes, you have done the will of God. The fasting, the prayer, the seed sowing. It's the will of God. He said, after you have done it, if you don't see results immediately, calm down. Are you with me? Don't cast away your confidence. The people that testified first don't mean that they're the only ones who got it. You are not hearing me here. He said, for you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, what happens? You might receive the promise. Now verse 37. For yet a little while. And he that shall come, we come. And we not tarry. Next verse. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul come on come on my soul if you give up quickly you abort the divine process so we just prayed for you over your finances and your landlord is coming by the end of august and there's no money anywhere and you're under a lot of pressure as satan keeps telling you August is approaching. August is approaching. August is approaching. What will you do? You are answering Satan. He says, I don't know. He said, the man will throw you out. What will you do? He says, I don't know. And every day, Satan is giving you assignment. Worrying assignment. And then you start confessing. By the second week, you have told yourself, you say, uh, I don't understand. Even the uh, 5,000 I even had, I even gave it a seed. I should have even kept it now. Even if they are driving me, I can use it to travel to village. You are not hearing me. You see, please look up here. What you have done may look like a normal human reaction, but you have cancelled 31 days of first. You didn't know. But some of you have been doing this for a lifetime, and that's why you have not had any result for many years. You don't understand the process. That persistence, if you are here, say yes. You stand your ground. Proverbs 23, 17 says, For surely there is an end, and your expectation shall not be good. You persist. I can't abort the process. God is at work in my life. I am still work in progress. Jehovah is on duty. Until he's done, I'm not done. I will have my proofs. If you have my voice, say yes. Do you know that sometimes you pray about something, you set a target there, but that target there hasn't happened physically. It doesn't mean it has not been released. It could have been delayed, but it will come. I thought I'm talking to people here. 
So why I'm taking my time to talk to you today is because a lot of people have lost their testimonies. Hanging around church. It can be you. Amen. Shout that amen well. Amen. The second victory is a victory of permanence. I've already got my testimony. But it, it needs to be permanent. And many people also lose in that battle. Uh, you got to know that Satan likes counter attacks. Somebody say counter attack. Can I say counter attack? Uh, one of the things a lot of young Christians uh, lose out on is on the counter attack of the devil. You came to church. We laid hands on you. The pain left you. And then three days later, the pain starts knocking at the door. Can I come in? You start feeling, you felt a little pain in the same place. Is the pen knocking at the door? Can I come in? And then suddenly you say, I, I, I even thought I was healed. The pen said, thank you, sir. <laughs> Comes and sits down. You are talking. Has settled their case. You hear me? But, Mature Christian, you see, in everything you do in life, maturity matters. For a mature believer who understands that Satan is a master in false evidence appearing real. I just say, get out! By his stripes I'm healed. You are not returning here. Why? Because they know what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12. He said, when an unclean spirit, verse 43. Is gone out of a man. He walked through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Next verse. Then he said, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Next verse. Then he goeth he. Then goeth he and taketh with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be done unto this wicked generation. Now, Jesus said, an unclean spirit get walked out of a person. Hello? Second service, are you well? Okay. So, a demon moved out of somebody's body. You rebuked a cancer. You rebuked an infirmity. You rebuked poverty. You rebuked a bondage. You rebuked the land. You rebuked whatever. He walked away. He said, when he goes, he doesn't just walk and continue. He goes sometime, he just said, ah, I, I used to like that accommodation. Uh, is there still space there? And he looks inside and sees the place is empty. It's swept, it's perfumed, but it's empty. He's all, oh boy, they return now. So he comes back. In. That's what Jesus said. You see, that's why after every spiritual activity, the first thing Satan does to you is to try to get you to relax and get back to your old ways. Please look up here. If you hear my voice, say yes. You see, Jewish people tell us that 40 is the number of transition. Somebody say 40. That's why many times we hear 40 days. I was in the mountain for 40 days. He was praying for 40 days. He did this thing for 40 days. And the teachers... That anything you can handle for 40 days, you can handle for a lifetime. If you can stop it for 40 days, you can stop it for a lifetime. Look up here. In their doctrine, they believe that when that spirit leaves a person, it moves around for 40 days. And if you can keep it out for 40 days, you can keep it out for a lifetime. Do you notice that every time you finish a program, Satan will fight very hard to get you to compromise before the 40 days. Get you to start misbehaving. Get you to start talking wrong. Get you to start uh, going back to your boyfriend and girlfriend. Get you to start uh, lying. Get you to miss paying your tithe. Get you to start me fighting in your home. Something will always happen to make sure that what left come back. Why can't you give a chance for that 40 days? Why can't you continue your prayer program? Everywhere is quiet. Are you guys okay? You see, I've just explained to you the last five years of your life. I just explained to you. 
why we said get out the spirit of uh, delay and denial and rejection get out and you rotated on the floor and you felt something walk over from you and then three years later you are still not married i just explained to you the reason because within the next three months you are still back with your boyfriend within three weeks you were still there so the thing that left came back they were not they look at me Are you guys well? I just explained to you. Why the financial poverty left and came back? It's because we are inconsistent. But could you actually right now make up your mind? Let's do the minimum of the 40 days. Can you just stay in prayer? And stay in purity? And stay in commitment to God? And let the thing that left you find another accommodation. The whole church is not hearing me this service, so let me close this chapter and let's go home. You came to dance. I came to change lives. Me and you, our agendas are different. Anybody catching what I'm teaching here? <laughs> is it brothers and sisters? Every spiritual failure ain't get why. I stretch my hand over you. Whatever wants to keep you barren, keep you sick, keep you broke, keep you unmarried, keep you struggling, die in the name of Jesus. Where your enemy lies, take your portion. So what are the principles for maintaining our victory? In the first service, I talked to him on the law of joy. Let me tell you what I told them. I said to them, anybody who misses the first service and didn't hear me, every other thing I'm talking about, they're going to find it difficult to meet up. As we go back now, put on your YouTube or Facebook and listen to a first service message. The law of joy is the foundation for every other thing I'm talking about. Believe me. There are some people who don't understand the importance of joy in not aborting your pregnancy spiritually. The second service now, I'm talking to you on the law of truth. The law of truth. And the last service I talk about the law of vigilance. You want to walk in victory. The law of truth. Nothing guarantees freedom like truth. John 8 32 and you shall know the truth and the truth shall do what no please can you put it on the screen they don't read their bible at home and you shall know the truth and the truth shall do what jesus set you free truth makes you free is anybody hearing me? Look up here now. We did a contract. You came. Finish your job. And I paid you one million. I gave you a check. And you took the check and went home. And while you are at home enjoying yourself, thanking God that your contract has been paid for, you didn't cash the check. Your landlord came and drove you and you're holding the check. Your children are hungry and you're holding the check. Even though I paid you, you didn't receive the payment. Jesus set you free at Calvary. Truth makes you free. You have your payment, but until you cash it, you don't have the money. Are you with me? And a lot of Christians who don't understand the power of truth to walk in freedom. Let me give you a few points. Number one, grace never walks alone. Grace always tags with truth. Psalm 85, 9 to 13. It says, surely his salvation is near. Near them that fear him. That glory may dwell in our land. Please, can you start from verse 8? Can you start from verse 8? 
Praise the Lord. He said, I will hear what God, the Lord, will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his son, but let them not turn again to folly. He said, God will speak peace for you, but don't mess up again. Next verse. Surely his salvation is near unto them that fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. May glory dwell in your land. Amen. Verse 10. That I'm, you people are trying to make me to shout. I have tried now. Why do you want your pastor to stress? Are you a witch? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Then respond to me well, so I don't have to be thinking where you're sleeping. Wave your hand and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Okay, now look at verse 10. Mercy and truth are what? Are made together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Verse 11. Truth shall spring out of the earth. And righteousness shall look down from where? Heaven. Verse 12. Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good, and our land will yield her increase. I thought you said that amen well. Amen. We end at verse 13. Righteousness shall go before him and shall set us in the way of his steps. Lift your right hand. I speak over you today that by grace and truth your destiny rise. Amen. You see, grace doesn't work alone. The Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 17 that the law came by Moses but grace and truth came by the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody say grace. grace. Somebody say truth. Can I say grace? grace? Can I say truth? I'm sure you know grace is unmerited favor. Huh? Huh? Yes, but do you know that somebody can give you unmerited favor and then when you come closer to the person, the favor is lost. Have you seen people who have got, got employment by favor? But when they started working, you found that they have no competence. And after some time, the favor is lost. They lost their job. God gives you by grace. But by truth, you preserve what you are given. You are not hearing. Miracles come by grace. But by what you know of the oppressions of God, you preserve what you got. A man can be given a platform by favor, but grace is not working alone. Truth helps to preserve it. If you hear here, say yes. That's why you need the knowledge of God. Second thing, truth has a sanctifying effect on destinies. Truth sanctifies. John chapter 17 from verse 14. He said, I have given them thy word. And the world hath hated them. Because they are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world. Are you of the world? I think it's not needful stressing myself for people who are not serious. I can see that you have already gone home. You have Anybody here? Okay. Musicians, let's dance. <laughs> Second service. Are you still struggling with the night vigil? No. You are fully awake. Yes, then I want us to get to the Bible together. I have given them thy word. Jesus said, I gave them your word. Huh? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. What was the result of them receiving the word? Huh? That when the world came to them, the world embraced them. The world celebrated them. Have you noticed that because you didn't know Bible, when you receive a prophetic word and things are turning around and looking as if they're difficult, you say, Kai, it didn't work. It's because of the word I gave them that the world hated them. The piety in your life is because a word came. Believe me, some of you here that are married to husbands that are stubborn and you are believing for an answer. Between the night vigil and the next two weeks, the kind of pressure that man will give you will look funny. All the pressure is to make you drop what you collected. After some time now, you see yourself, tell yourself, I, I know, I, I, I'm, I'm not stupid, I'm not stupid. 
you tie your wrapper. I'm not stupid. Whatever you want, I will give you to you now. And then your mouth will start running. Your mouth will start running. And Satan is clapping. He say one, one, one. That's it. That's it. That's it. You, you are not hearing me yet. Have you, have you ever noticed that after a major spiritual oppression, people that should even offend you begin to offend you? Oh, what I'm saying is that true? Get to your work anyway. You, you be asked, what is going on here? I gave them a prophecy, and then everything came up. The world hated. He said, because they're not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. But how do they stay in victory? He said, I pray not that that should they take them out of the world, but that that should they keep them from the evil. He said, I don't pray that you take them from the world. You don't need to leave your marriage. You don't need to leave your job. You don't. He said, no, 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 no. You can be what darkness is and can be kept from evil. How? Verse 16. They are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. Verse 17. Sanctify them. Set them apart. Differentiate them. Remove them from danger and darkness through thy word. Thy word is what? Truth. Your knowledge of the truth separates you from evil. It sanctifies you. It puts you above situations and circumstances. You can see something coming and just laugh. It's I know you. It's I know you. Your husband is raging. Your wife is making trouble. You just smile. It's I know what's going on. He said, my husband, whether I am right or wrong, I'm sorry. You want me to kneel now? How come the nail? Can we move on? Because you know there's an abortion Satan is working on. A pregnant woman doesn't fight. You are too pregnant with destiny to be involved in a stupid fight. Are they hearing me here today? But you are going now. An occupied rider can insult you on Saturday morning from program. You just finished a night vigil. And Keke Rider insult you. You settled their fight with Keke. And you didn't know that that fight with Keke took away five years from you. Every prophecy. Every declaration. You see, what you don't know is bigger than you. Many of you here, if God shows you why nothing has worked, you will cry to test you. Because you just keep hanging around church. And say, it doesn't work. I don't know. Why they saying it's not working? It's not working because you're not working it. Sanctify them through your truth. What your word is truth. The third thing is this our time is almost up, so that's wrong. The devil is a lie, and the driver of all lying realities. The devil is not just a liar, he's a lie. He's the driver of all lying realities. So without knowledge of truth, you can't defeat him. Look up here. You know we call fear, F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. Do you know that Satan manufactures evidence? Huh? You get back from now, and then you have a dream again that looks like the old dream you used to have. You used to have a dream of eating in the, the dream. And then you get back again after the night vision, and then suddenly you saw yourself having a dream, and why they brought food for you. And you get up, you're so angry. He said, like, I couldn't even resist. I couldn't. Calm down, calm down, calm down. It's a mind trick. It's a mind trick. As you get up that day, just look up and smile, laugh. He said, Santa, I only want meat. Say, poor devil. I said, your mess will put 17 meat. Is it is it is it how bad my case is that the kind of devil assigned to me is a poor one? You are not hearing me. Is it is is it hey if they if they were assigning a demon to me, they should have at least assigned one that you see the soup you cook. Thunder fire you. The way you talk. If you have my voice, say yes. yes. Hey, what kind of nonsense? Uh, I had a dream, and then a man came to start touching me. And other, I don't understand. I thought it was over. 
false evidence appearing in Miracle is all God. If you're a real man, appear. They're not hearing. Yeah. Appear now. How your own and they dream that they do them. Anybody hearing my voice here? Yeah. Your attitude, the way that don't fall for the mind game. I've told you before. When Satan looks around you and doesn't see an access, he gives a dream. When you believe the dream and behave in accordance to the foolish dream you had, you open the door of fear. And when you open the door of fear, access is granted. The reason Satan is sending the dream, listen to me, if you are here, say yes. yes. If anybody can hurt you and the person wants to hurt you, he won't warn you. It will just hurt you. The only person who wants to hurt you and starts telling you, I'm going to do this to you, is trying to put you first under tension because he can't do it. Satan can't kill you. But he will show you a dream where you died. And then after dying the dream, you still wake up and you are still worried about dying in the dream. You died in the dream. And you still woke up. And you are still worried that you died in the dream. You are Mumu Weaka. <laughs> is, is anybody hearing me? Have you looked the craze? Game with. My life is it with Christ in God. He satisfied life. I don't die where they die. No weapon form the gift which are prosper. You be anyway truth. Someone say truth. You are know the truth and the free. You are no such with a tradition. After all this fasting and prayer, you are in the dream. Somebody can snatch your briefcase and run. You woke up. He said, hey, 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 that, that's something that happened before. Now, uh, my, my money is going to got lost. Calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. There's a prophecy. Is anybody hearing me? How do you, how do you handle it with the truth? Hello? The law of truth. He said, my word is like a fire. It burns the ashes. It's like a hammer. It, it burns the chaff. It's like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. He said, the prophet that has a dream, let him share his dream. The one that has my word, let him speak my word. Can you compare chaff with wheat? That's what the word of God says. So, that dream is chaff. His word is wheat. And he said, if you need to burn the chaff, use word against it. He said, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings. Has he what? Ordained strength. Release the strength. I stretch my hand over it. On the authority of Jesus, whose I am and whom I serve, you will never see shame again. John chapter 8 verse 44 Jesus was saying, he said you are your father the devil and the loss of your father you will do he was a murderer from the beginning and I both not in the truth because there is no truth in him when he speaketh a lie he speaketh of his throne for he is a liar and the father of in another version he said when he speaks the lie he speaks his native language Lie is Satan's native, just like an Igbo man, and you speak Igbo. When Satan speaks, his lie is his native, his village language. It flows from him. Am I talking to somebody here? So anytime Satan tells you it's not available, no, it's excess. Every time he says it has not happened, no, it has over happened. Every time he says you are sick, no, I am healthy. I'm talking. Is anybody hearing me here? A lie is his native language. Lift up your hand. What you are looking for has been found. I'm spending long time teaching today. Are you catching me? 
I didn't plan to, but I'll do that. The more you have revelation of truth, the more of your inheritance you can assess. He said, the Holy Ghost is coming. John chapter 16, verse 12. He said, how many things we should say to you? But I can't say them all because you can't handle them. He said, the Holy Ghost is coming. He will guide you into all truth. He will take of men and give to you. So the more you have revelation of truth, the more you can take your inheritance. Amen. Uh, amen. Amen. I declare over you that before the next one month, everyone here believing for a testimony, you will have proofs. I hear this now. When your heart is filled with truth, it has no place for the return of evil inhabitants. When your heart is full of truth, evil inhabitants cannot return. Are you hearing me? Remember what we read in Matthew chapter 12. Jesus said when the unclean spirit comes back, he finds the place what? Empty. Somebody say empty. Uh, can I say empty? empty? Louder. Can I say empty? empty. Uh, you see, the word of God is light and the word of God is truth. Is that true? How many of you know that things that love darkness don't like to stay where there's light? Huh? If your heart is filled with light, witches, witchcraft devils, spirits of hell cannot settle down there. Hello? Please look up here. Any lady here, whether you have gone through deliverance before or not, that can for the next 40 days wake up every day and take a bible verse that deals with deliverance and confess it over your life and anoint yourself if in 40 days time whatever bondage it was is still repeating there come to see me in the office we'll talk about it, it will not happen it's just that you don't know how it works why is it that those of us that are men of god don't go for deliverance why do you how do you think we handle our own situations when issues come you are looking for power we are working with truth what you are going through we have gone through them there's nobody on this earth the whole earth lieth in wickedness this is a wickedness son of creation if you have my voice say yes, yes. why is it that there are people higher than you it's not because of anything. It's not because we are, uh, the man is highly anointed. No. It's that what comes against you, we know how to put on light and the light will handle darkness. It just begins to run. Just begins to run. Just, just truth. Just truth. You, you just begin to hammer it with truth. Hammer it with revelation. Practice truth. Speak it. Stand with it. I got to close. If I don't stop now, I won't be able to dance much. Are you here? If you hear my voice, I hear you. I hear you Can I say it louder? I hear you. I hear you uh, why, why do I memorize the word of God? Why do I keep speaking it? Well, John chapter 1 from verse 1. He said, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was what? God. Now, now that word, he calls it light. And he said, the light shines in darkness. And the darkness cannot what? So the word in you is God in you. Filling your heart and bringing light to your heart. Where will darkness hide? That's the secret of deliverance. I know people that have been in deliverance churches for 17 years who are still looking for deliverance. You are not hearing me. There are people you know that are your friends who have been in churches where their pastor is a known deliverance minister for the last 10 years and are still running up and down looking for deliverance for the same thing. The problem is true. If you know how this thing works, you won't need deliverance three times. Never. You're just in victory for the rest of your life. Deliverance is not an occupation. You are not hearing. Is anybody hearing me? 
Nobody lives in the hospital. Nobody lives in the hospital. If you go to hospital, they kill you, you go home. Nobody should have lifetime infusion. You are not hearing. The only people that take drugs every day are people who have sicknesses that cannot be cured. So you say manage it, manage it, manage it, manage it, manage it. Your own demon is incurable. So every week you have to come for deliverance. We'll give you a little tablet. Manage it for another week. Manage your demon for another week. No, he didn't tell me to help you manage me. He said cast it out. So if you meet me twice, I shall cast it out. Not every week you come and say, oh, Pastor, eh? they don't come again. If I continue like that, I will die for you. And I'm not planning to die for you. Jesus died for you. I will add my own. <laughs> Is anybody hearing my voice? <laughs> Lift your hand above your head. Every bondage in your destiny, bow in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Do you know that when you walk in truth, your proximity to darkness decreases? You cannot be close to darkness walking in truth. Satan hates people who are not good customers. Anybody here before had one of these scammers call you and calls you and you are answering? So he thought he's dealing with a mugu and just keep answering. Just keeps answering, just keeps answering, just keeps answering. And then about, about, about 40 minutes of wasting his time and your own time. You are not here. You, 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 had, you had nothing to do. You just kept answering. One time somebody called me with a foreign number. I know he's a Nigerian calling nonsense. He just keeps talking. I know that. I just kept talking. I know that. I said, well, at, at that point, I was agreeing to everything. How are we going to do it? How are we going to do the call? How are we going to I kept agreeing and all that. After that, I said, Are you tired of stupidity? Is a thunder fire you? <laughs> Are you tired of stupidity? You have just wasted all your money. The moment they find out that you know, they get angry. What I'm saying is that true? No, no, no. That's how Satan behaves. The reason he keeps coming is that you're a good customer. He likes you. You do good business with him. The day the devil finds out that you know what he knows, your trouble will reduce. Your trouble will reduce. I'm in the house now, and the house is shaking. Hey, something just came. Hey, another. I was like, G what? Nonsense. He said, something enter my room. I was like, oh, gee, he was, he was, he almost killed me. Pastor, <laughs> Pastor, <laughs> hey, I prayed in money. Pray what? You are bigger than what is trying to kill you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Why are you scared? And for your information, if you die, you go to heaven. Stop being afraid of death. Early death, early, early arrival. <laughs> Come. <laughs> Come down. Must you live forever? <laughs> I'm not planning for you to die. But why are you so afraid of death? He put about two verse 14. The Bible says, through fear of death, men are held subject to bondage for a lifetime. The moment Satan finds fear of death in you, he will keep displaying for you. I get into a plane now, and then and a, a plane is shaking. <laughs> the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. <laughs> I told you, we're coming from Lagos. I was in the aircraft, and then boom, the thing fell as if it was coming down. People screamed. Brothers and sisters, I'm not lying. I didn't know when I said laughing. The reason I was laughing is it just occurred to me all of this we don't want to die you. <laughs> the way they scream. I said laughing. The man sitting there said, uh, he didn't know me. He said, oh, why are you laughing? <laughs> my mouth. Let me get my mouth now. Let me go that way. <laughs> I lift my hand over you. Father, die. 
fear die in your life darkness end in your life shame end in your life can I hear your amen Ephesians 6 so for we wrestle not against flesh and blood against principalities against powers against rulers of darkness of this world are you with me but it starts by saying put on the whole armor and what is the first armor truth Guard your loins with truth. The moment you wear truth, you can't have nakedness. Guard your loins with truth. Truth is the key to not be naked in this thing. Are you with me? And finally, the proof that truth has entered you is a joyful sound. When a man is occupied with truth, Joy is natural to him. Psalm 89. From verse 13. Thou hast a mighty arm. Strong is thy hand. And high is thy right hand. 19, 14. Justice and judgment are the habitants shown of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before your face. What will go before his face? When mercy and truth goes, look at the response. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O oh Lord, in the light of them. When a man has mercy and truth, joyful sound becomes normal. And then walking in his paper becomes normal. You wake up in the morning, Satan is raging. And suddenly it dawns on you. The only reason Satan is doing this drama is because my next level is here. Suddenly, instead of reacting to the nonsense, you begin celebrating. Because it alerts you that something is about to happen. They that know truth. That's why. Why am I going through what I'm going through? Why will Potiphar's wife do what he's doing? Ah, Joseph, it's about time to go to a palace. Calm down. How many of you know the night before David was made king was the night you read in 1 Samuel chapter 31 when they captured his wife and children. And God has to say to him, uh, pursue, overtake, and recover all. It was the night before he was enthroned. The Bible said the people thought of stoning him, but he encouraged himself in the Lord his God. He didn't know that while the devil was attacking his camp, that was the night that Saul died. What he has been waiting for, a throne he has been waiting for for 13 years, opened that night. But he wasn't aware. What he was doing is his own situation. What if he began to complain against God and began to run into trouble with God and lost everything? Saul died in the mountain. David is here. They say that God has told you. David didn't know that all that battle is because the throne just opened up. If you die here, you don't get there. Sir, whatever you are looking for has been found. Don't lose it before it manifests. Stay on truth. Stand to your feet. I know I overthought. I didn't plan to teach this long. But did you catch something? Lift your hands and say, I can hear you. And let me hear you screaming, Satan will not win. My answer will manifest. Jesus, my sister, I see you not pass me by. I do not pass me by. I break no sin. I break no blessing. We are not the opportunity. In the name of Jesus, Shaka power, 